On this link, I'm watching what I think is the third assembly uh, since lockdown began. And it's my honor and pleasure today to talk to you about honesty, one of the key values that we have here at the school. Um, honesty, which I think is a, a, a very obvious concept. I think it's very easy to get what honesty is and perhaps quite challenging to do an assembly where I want to put across to you how honesty can change if the environment changes a little bit. And to conclude with where honesty lies in the current crisis and how things have altered massively during lockdown. Um, the aims of the assembly, you can see there, are, are, are very clear. I want to define honesty, to give some examples of honesty, to show how it's not always on, easy um, to be honest, uh, and finally to congratulate the level of honesty, I think, that we've seen across our school community and a wider community uh, during this, this crisis. To ensure that you're listening, I've built in four deliberate lies during this presentation. Um, I hope you stay awake. I hope you're able to uh, figure out what they are. Some are more obvious than others. Uh, and I'd be delighted to hear from anyone who reckons they can get all four. Here's the definition of honesty then. Very simple. But for the younger students, perhaps I would challenge them to start to think that honesty is more than um, just not lying. Honesty uh, is about doing the right things, about morally taking the right actions. It's about being real with yourself and real with those people who are around you. And that is a big difference between honesty and integrity. Integrity is about being honest with yourself. Honesty is about being uh, correct, doing the morally the right thing with uh, other people around you. We all know how to be honest. Being honest is easy. If you found £10,000 on the street and there was nobody there, what would you do? And the answer probably, almost certainly, is you'd hand in that £10,000. And you'd do that for a range of reasons. You could, um, there's all sorts of reasons why you, you might decide to do it. But I think it's that fourth reason there, which is the critical one. Ultimately, in your heart, you know it's the right thing to do. And yes, guilt about being caught or empathy for someone else. But ultimately, you know it's the right thing to do. And if it was you that had lost that money, you, you would also want the person who found it to do the same thing. So I think the vast majority of us, if you found that level of money, you'd hand it in. Let's look at another example. If I, well, it's the same example. If you found £10,000 on the street, but this time I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will not get caught. I guarantee you that money is yours. It will disappear into your accounts, whatever. No one will ever find out that you took that money. What would you do? Would you take it? This challenges your honesty and your integrity more than the previous example. It's a really hard thing to do. Your reason for taking the money, of course, could be really positive. You might not be taking it to waste it on whatever. You might be taking it to support your family, to make a massive difference. £10,000 is a lot of money. Maybe you're a little more selfish than that. Maybe you would take it to buy a heck of a lot of computer games or fashion, or maybe even a ticket to see Manchester United play in the championship. But what would you do? Would you take it or would you leave it and hand it in. So why lie? The reasons for lying are long, but it's everything from downright skullduggery to try and manipulate and get the best out of a situation all the way through to actually caring for other people. Um, Sometimes a lie can be deliberate, sometimes it can be a white lie that I'll get to shortly, and sometimes it could be an exaggeration. A good example of that, and I'll let you make the decision on this, would be the inauguration of the current president of the United States, Donald Trump, when he was inaugurated at the White House in New York um, a few years back. He claimed that more people turned up to his inauguration there than turned up to the previous president, Barack Obama. Here's the photograph. Left is Barack Obama, right is Donald Trump. What do you think? 
Deliberate lie? Exaggeration? I'll let you decide. Can we learn to be more honest? The three experiments done in 2015, of which I'll tell you just about one, would suggest that we can. Now, this was in the New Scientist magazine a couple of years back. And the first experiment, which was kind of mimicked with two others, was about some business students going into a hall to try and purchase some um, stately homes, some historic homes. The sellers of these homes were prepared to sell them, and it was a competition. Who could sell, who could purchase, sorry, the most homes from these sellers? Now, the sellers did not want their homes damaged once the sale had gone through. So they wanted a guarantee that once their home had been sold, that the buyer would respect that. The buyers weren't told to do that. That was, they could do anything they want once they'd purchased the, 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 the stately home. Half of the buyers were given time to write out and think about when they'd been dishonest in the past. And then they were put into the competition. The others didn't do that. They went straight in. And you can see from the figures there that for those that had thought about lying and dishonesty in the past, way fewer of those actually lied to the home owners when they were trying to buy them. So by thinking about that, what they've actually done is almost guilted themselves into being more honest in the future. And the two other experiments done in an office environment and done with students doing normal student work gave exactly the same conclusions. The more you think about dishonesty, the more honest that you will actually be. I don't know if you spotted if I've lied at all yet, and I hope you've remembered the challenge that I set right at the beginning. We wouldn't want to get rid of all lies. White lies are there. Um, they're beneficial. Uh, we use them to make people feel better. And there's a good chance you've used a white lie during this crisis. That meal that your mom or dad produced by scraping together whatever was found at the back of the cupboards because you'd run out and you're trying not to go to the shops too much. You wouldn't give honest feedback potentially to that. You would do this white lie that I've talked about. Thanks, Dad. That meal was lovely. It was really clever what you did with sardines and sugar puffs. For me, it was the haircut that I got, which you can probably see. I desperately, desperately needed a haircut. I was starting to look like Mr. Hollis. I had so much hair. Thankfully, Miss Dolan cut my hair. She's not done that before, but she had a go. Thank you, Miss Dolan. It's a lovely effort. I really appreciate it. It's modern. It's different. It's inventive. Thank you. White lies are there to help, but slide a bit further down. And you've just got to be careful to be honest with yourself. Um, I think being honest with yourself in the current climate is harder to do because there's so much isolation. You're not seeing your friends as much and it must be quite hard. Things like I will go for that run, but not quite yet. I will get that schoolwork done. I will stick to my timetable. I just need to watch all 83 episodes of Game of Thrones before I get on to that work. That's sort of a slide from the white lie into just telling yourself, I suppose, sort of a white lie that you will get that done eventually. But do you? Do you actually get there and get that done? The level of honesty you show does massively change with the environment. In 1961 was a very, very famous experiment done by uh, Professor um, Stanley Milgram at Yale University. And what he did was he took two students into a room. He attached one to an electric chair, basically, and he put the other one in charge of the controls of that electric chair. And he gave the one with the controls the challenge of teaching the other one pairs of words. He then made them do a test to see how well that had gone. And if the person being asked in the electric chair got the pair wrong, the controller, the other student, was told to give them a mild electric shock. This electric shock 
to begin with was very, very small. As the competition went on, when they were asked more and more questions, the controller was asked to turn the electricity up and give more and more powerful electric shocks as the experiment progressed. Now, what the person in the controls didn't know was the person on the other side, the one attached to the electric chair, wasn't. They were an actor and it was fake. It was set up to see just what would that controller do with that electricity. Would they turn the voltage up? Would they actually give electric shocks to somebody else? The actor played their role brilliantly. He yelped in pain to begin with. And as the voltage went up, they changed their behavior. They started to shout a little bit, scream a little bit, plead quite a lot. And the results are stunning. Nobody listening to this, I hope, would ever give anyone an electric shock of any voltage and certainly not anything like 240 volts, which you would know, of course, would be fatal. But in this environment, the honesty of the person controlling the electricity seemed to disappear. They were trying to do the right thing by the professor who'd asked them to do this experiment. Their honesty seemed to be towards that person, towards that figure of authority, rather than the person in the electric chair. That person who was shouting and screaming and crying, they just turned the voltage up. 100% of the people in this situation electrocuted that person with 240 volts. 100%, every single person did that. Indeed, 65% of them went all the way up to the massive end voltage of 450 volts which would have utterly, utterly fried that other person. Some of the actors pleaded and pleaded and then stopped talking, pretending to be unconscious because of the pain and the, the electricity that they'd had. Didn't stop people. In this environment, the honesty seemed to change. And quite blindly, it seemed, the majority just turned up the voltage and kept hitting that button. I hope you would never do that. I hope you would never electrocute someone for all the obvious, obvious reasons. But I think it does go to show that you've just got to be careful that honesty can change. And if the environment is different, how much do you actually stick to the integrity, the honesty you have with yourself and the honesty of what you would expect others to do to you? The point is that honesty can easily be affected by the environment. So to the impact of honesty during the current uh, crisis, it would have been so easy for people to try and dodge lockdown rules. And I'll come back to that in a second. I think it's been remarkable that people have been as honest. But before we look at that, honesty with work. This is really important and it's for all students. Are you being honest with the work that's being set? Are you helping yourself by setting timetables and sticking to it? Are you helping yourself by encouraging your parents to be involved and to support that, that learning? It is really hard. It's really easy to, to sort of put yourself off getting that work done. Have a timetable, do it. That work is really important, guys. Ultimately, it's important for all year groups. I would particularly impress upon year 10 and 12 just why you need to be honest with this work. You've got exams a year from now. It's really important you get this done. Although that's really important, arguably it's also important, maybe more important to be honest about your own welfare. These are odd times. These are, these are very, very strange times. When you are away from your friends so much, we all at this school hope you're OK. And you need to be honest with how you're feeling. We've got great support up here. We've got an amazing team of um, uh, mentors across the inclusion unit. You've got brilliant form tutors. Please do talk. Please be honest about where you're at and do ask for help. Talk to your friends uh, on social media. Talk to your family. Do get in touch with school if you need to. Having spoken a lot about honesty, 
what what do I think about where we're at with the current crisis? Well, I think there's three things that have impressed me the most. And the British Museum, as you probably know, are asking us to try and think, what would you put forward to remember this unique time in our lives? This almost certainly won't happen again. And the museum wants to put something together so that when normality resumes, you can remember back to what it was like during the lockdown of 2020. For me, I think there are three things that I'm, I'm going to put forward. Firstly, the rainbows, the thinking about the NHS and our care workers. I think the emotional outpouring towards those guys has been utterly remarkable. I'm sure you've got a rainbow in your window, or you probably have. I know my family has, and um, it's remarkable. The second thing that I would suggest is Major Tom and his uh, 100 lap of his garden, the money that he's raised, over 30 million. What an amazing guy, what an amazing story. Um, and surely that has to be part of the British Museum. And, and finally, um, I think honesty during this lockdown. I think that is one of the three things that is most remarkable. People haven't just followed the rules. They've done that and more. It would be easy to flout the rules, to break social distancing, to go to the shops a lot, to, to travel unnecessarily. The, answer, the, the truth is that we haven't done that. We've done our best to follow those rules. And as you can see on that slide there, um, we've also done more than that. We've looked after each other. People have done some remarkable things to look after neighbours, to shop for those neighbours or friends or family. A huge amounts of extra have gone in. And I think, as I bring to a conclusion this assembly, these are the things that you should think about from lockdown. Honesty, being honest with yourself through this process, it has been um, a remarkable part of where we're at. Thank you very much for listening. And for anyone who's keen enough, if you'd like to drop me an email, with the errors, if you've spotted any during this assembly, I'll be delighted to get them. Thank you for listening.